Hi, and welcome to Dr. Vanderveen's AP Chemistry podcast. The focus of this podcast is to discuss molality. I'd like to define molality, and then we'll go on and do some practice problems where we calculate molality. Let's start with the definition, though. We really want to start at the beginning. Molality is given the symbol lowercase m, and I've got the equation on the slide for you. This is definitely an equation you should memorize. It's not that hard. Um, molality is defined as the moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. Remember, the denominator here is just the solvent alone, and it's got to be in kilograms. So if you've got grams, remember you have to divide by a thousand to get kilograms. I did want to take a moment and contrast molality, which is our focus, with molarity, which is another concentration unit that's commonly used. Molarity is given the symbol capital M, not to confuse the two, and it's defined as the moles of solute over the volume of the solution in liters. So I did want to just compare them because students do com uh, confuse them very easily. Molality is moles per kilogram of the solvent, only the solvent, whereas molarity is about the moles of solute in the final volume of the total solution. So you want to make sure that you don't confuse them. Our focus right now, remember, is on molality. Now the reason the molality concentration unit is useful to us is because when we're talking about moles and kilograms, these both relate back to mass. How many particles do you have? How much of this stuff do you have? But mass, as we know, does not depend on temperature. So molality gives us a concentration unit that is independent of temperature. It doesn't matter how much the temperature changes, the moles of solute and the mass of the solvent won't change, unlike molarity, um, where the volume of the solution can change somewhat as the temperature changes. This makes molality the concentration unit of choice if you are working with colligative properties. So if you have to look at freezing point depressions or boiling point depressions, molality, or boiling point elevations, excuse me, molality is the concentration unit that you need to use. Let's go on and make sure we can use this formula to solve some problems. All right, so here's a little problem as a word problem. Calculate the molality of a solution prepared from 29.1 grams of toluene, which has the chemical formula C7H8, dissolved in 832 grams of benzene. So benzene is the solvent. Toluene is the solute. All right, so we need to find the moles of the solute by dividing the grams by the GFM, and we need to convert our 832 grams of benzene to kilograms by dividing by 1,000. All right, so let's first do the moles of toluene calculation, and then we'll plug this into the molarity, the molality formula. See, it's so easy to say the wrong thing. All right, now, if you look up on your periodic table, seven carbons plus the mass of eight hydrogens, it's going to give you a molar mass of about 92 grams per mole for toluene. So we'll go ahead and we'll calculate the moles of toluene. We know that moles equals the grams divided by the GFM. All right, and so we've got 29.1 grams of toluene, 92 grams per mole for the toluene, gives us 0 0.316 moles of toluene. Now we're ready to take this and move into the molality formula and calculate the molality of this solution. All right, since molality equals moles of solute, well, we just found that, divided by the kilograms of solvent, and we had done that before as well. All right, that's a very easy conversion. All right, 0 0.316 moles of solute. All right. We take the 832 grams, divide it by 1,000 grams per kilogram. All right, we get 0.832 kilograms. Gives us a molality of 0 0.380 molel is what it's called, 0 0.380 molel. Now, when you do this on your calculator, you might get a slightly different answer. Remember, we're only allowed three sig figs, so we do have to correct for that when we report this. And then the unit would be little m. 
go on more problem. Make sure we're really comfortable with doing molality calculations. Now this one's a little bit different. This question asks, how many grams of sulfur, all right, and this allotrope of sulfur has eight sulfur atoms in a molecule, must be dissolved in 200 grams of naphthalene, which has the chemical formula C10H8, to make a 0.23 molal solution. All right, so let's start with the GFM of sulfur. Sulfur here is our solute. That's why I care about its GFM, its molar mass. And naphthalene here is the solvent. So we don't need the molar mass of naphthalene. It's the sulfur that matters in terms of moles. All right. S8 has a molar mass of 256.52 grams per mole. And we know that molality is equal to moles over kilogram. But we also know that moles are equal to the grams divided by the molar mass, or GFM. So we can substitute that in. All right. So I've got grams over GFM, or molar mass, divided by the kilograms of solvent. All right. um, I have 200 grams of naphthalene. I have to divide that by 100, by 1,000. All right, it would be 0 0.2000 kilograms of naphthalene. And um, I can, I had to solve here for grams. All right, I know the GFM, I know the kilograms, I know the molality. So what I need to do is rearrange the equation so I can isolate grams. I always like to rearrange my equations before I go sticking any numbers into my equation. It's always safer. All right. So when I rearrange that, I get that the grams of solute is equal to the molality of the solution, which is 0.23 molo, times the GFM of the solute, which is 256.52, uh, times the kilograms of solvent. And of course, we know that we have to divide that number by 1,000, as we had just done on the previous slide. So we can now substitute the numbers in. All right, we're solving for grams of solute, 0.23 moles, mole L, moles per, I should put that in, moles per kilogram, all right, times 256.52 grams per mole, times 0 0.2000 kilograms. Now what you'll notice is that when we do this, the unit of kilograms cancels out. The unit of moles cancels out, leaving me with the units of grams, which is what I want to solve for, which is reassuring. And then I can type the numbers into my calculator, and I get as an answer of 12 grams. Now, you may be looking at your calculator when you did this out saying, I didn't quite get that. Remember, since the solution is only known to two sig figs for its molality, I can only report the answer to two sig figs. And that's why 12 grams is the correct answer. Great. We'll stop.